I'm at the AZZ factory in Fulton, Missouri today where they manufacture switch gear and we're going to talk about fat. I'm not talking about the kind you get when you eat too much of the holidays, but factory acceptance testing. What this is, is the customer could come to the factory and inspect the gear, go over, do any type of preliminary testing. Protection settings can be preloaded in the relays. And that's what we're doing down here this week. They've allowed me to come in here and observe this and take some video. So I, hopefully some of this factory acceptance testing stuff, or fat for short, will make some sense. A lot of background noise here because we are in a factory, but I want to explain a little bit about how we power up this gear temporarily. What you see behind me is a flashing light on the uh, temporary power source to supply control power to the relays. This is uh, so that the preliminary testing can be done and the engineering firm or the customer can load their protective settings into the relay and check the relay functions. There is no 13.8 kV power on here yet. They do have the capability of supplying that for testing PTs, but that will be done at a later time.
Take two. Below each relay is a series of test switches. You can see on here it de is dependent on the number of I.O. points and according to how many test switches there are. This is real handy for testing and uh, troubleshooting out in the field because you do not need to open the door to access these points. Your VTs, CTs are here, your relay power, and all of your I.O. points. This is real handy to have and with the uh, implementation of 70E over the last few years, it's become a necessity. It's also one of the things we always test when we're doing the factory acceptance testing. So what's the point of all this factory testing and what's the benefits on it? Well, the engineering firm that designed it, the company that purchased it, perhaps the electricians that are going to be installing it, the technicians, engineers, slash electricians are going to be putting in the settings and hooking up to it. This is a good time for them to preview everything, check everything out, see what they're going to be working with, possibly find an error. You never know what you're going to find. This is also a good opportunity for the technician to load their relay protection settings, test for trip, test for the mock and talk, upcoming video on what that is if you don't know, and be able to see exactly how everything's going to operate. Operate that remote control panel, open and close the breakers, you don't have a voltage you need to worry about, you're not going to drop any loads, you're not going to tick off the utility company because you're adding and dropping load repeatedly, you're not going to mess with their tap changers. You can do all this stuff while you're on site, before it's ever installed, and if you do find a problem, it can be fixed before it's on site. Okay, that was just a little tour of uh, the trip I made down there to Fulton, Missouri, to the AZZ factory. They do some top-notch work down there. Uh, so, okay, what do we find? Uh, wrong? really not much, a few paint nicks here and there. Uh, they did find one loose connection but it became known that that's because that cubicle wasn't done yet. Maybe as you were looking at some of the video I shot you saw some of the wiring was not uh, really neat and it had yellow tags on it. Maybe just temporarily tie wrap back. That is for testing purposes where it's connected to the remote panel for remote operations so that we can try all these different operations while we're on site and make sure everything works that will all be taken out. You may have already also noticed that on the test switch for the CTs that there was a plastic card stuck in there. The reason for that is in order to do secondary injection through the test switch, which is really handy and much better than trying to do it on the back of the relay, is when you open those it automatically shunts the CTs. Now obviously we have no load here because we're not hooked up to anything, but we did want to be able to check the function of the relay make sure it tripped on both time over current, instantaneous, and ground fault. While I was doing this, I needed to open that shunt up so I could secondary inject onto the CT, hence the card in there. In a future video, I'll go in a little more on what I use test switches for and what they can be used for and why they're so handy and why they're so important. Uh, if you got a little bit of good out of this and like what you see, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when I put more upcoming videos on. Thanks for watching.